today, but we are those were canceled at the last minute. So we can go through the agenda up until um, the closed session. So we'll have a call to order, we'll have announcements, and we will have public appearances for items that are not um, on the agenda. But then I think that we have to, and I think that then we have to wait to, um, then I guess we'll close it and then reopen it at 7 p.m. because that's what our posted agenda says. So um, at this time, we are missing a commissioner. So at this time, we will call the meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Um, are there announcements from any of the commissioners? Um, so I have a couple of announcements, and that's that the agenda will be adjusted slightly tonight um, to move. We're going to be moving a few things around. Um, I believe that there there might there are requests to take a few things off of the consent calendar. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I'll be. Um, Taking two things off the consent calendar, one is item 10.3, Sonoma County Library 2017 annual library closures May through December, and that is going to be moved down to um, section 12 under action items by motion. So it can fit in there nicely with approved new schedule of library hours and services seemed like they went together better. Um, and then um, also we're moving item 10.4 down to action items by resolution um, so that we can hear the presentation by the Rosen Coalition prior to approving the resolution or, or voting on the resolution, excuse me. Um, any other announcements? All right. Any members of the public wishing to speak to the commission at this time, please come forward. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. I've come before you folks a number of times over the last few years, but basically you didn't really know me in the times we were working 20, 30 years ago with the uh, Concerned Citizens for Southwest Area Youth, and we're trying to get a library and do some positive things over in Roseland. So I'm very grateful that you folks are working on positive things, and now that you got your tax passed, I'm really Hopefully you'll start to open up all the libraries all the days of the week and increase the hours and start doing good stuff. Not that you're already not doing good stuff. Of course you're doing great stuff. And that Roseland branch is a good thing. It's a nice situation. And I'm just happy in so many ways on so many fronts. The city's taking on a few different issues. The other day they had a forum called the Homeless Collective. No, that wasn't it. Yeah, Homeless Collective Housing Summit. That was it. I don't know if any of you got a chance to go there. But it was really important because you folks deal with a lot of homeless people. It's almost a, a second nature situation for libraries these days. And one of the things that was brought up by the gentleman from Canada who was brought down to explain to us how we might make things better is something <clears throat> that's really important. It may have gone over the heads of some of the bureaucrats there because they were already set in their ways and focusing in on certain things. But he said something that they teach you in planning school, very first day almost. And that is, don't plan for us without us. It's really basic. And so I really think that one of the things that needs to go on with you folks is more outreach into the community and planning for different things. Like we have one of the largest homeless encampments in Sonoma County now over in Roseland. A lot of those folks use your library. But I didn't see any agenda up on the library. I was there on Saturday. I was like, okay. Got to go downtown to figure out what's going on Monday night. 
So when I see the whole agenda, I see, hey, you folks are talking about Roseland. That's pretty cool. I only know one person in that uh, Roseland coalition, Ms. Kuta, met her three years ago, coming over to a thing called uh, Santa Rosa Together, going to welcome us into the city when we get annexed. So that's a positive. But you got 15,000 people over there. That's more than Katadi. That's more than Eelsburg, more than Sebastopol. It could have been a city itself. And it gets left out of a lot of stuff because of the way jurisdictional agencies operate as silos and don't communicate across the walls, if you will, and don't really get those residents involved, many of whom are taxpayers and people who will make things better. So don't plan for us without us. We're going to jump right in the middle of having some good fun. And I might not be able to stay the whole way, but I do know one thing. People I'm talking with, they want to see a separate boys and girls club having their own facility, just like the one that could be out there. It is out there in Montgomery Village. We could have one like that. And then we get a separate library, like the one in Rincon Valley or the one in Cottingtown that's been there for decades. We just have to think bigger. We've got to go for asking for more money. And I'll help. I don't mind walking up to really rich people and saying, hey, why don't you help the neighborhood that made you rich in a sense? A lot of those people over there are farm workers, working for Kendall Jackson, working for Gallo, working for Coppola, working for all kinds of folks. We got billionaires in our county, so let's start asking them to help us get Roseland to be just as nice as everywhere else. Nothing but a good time. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. I'll put this back down because I know it's in the way. I hope I can stay around to that uh, Roseland Collective clam bake. All righty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Deborah Doyle. Um, congratulations. Isn't it great that we've got more money to work with this, uh, this time around? Um, I, I was um, lucky enough to move up here. My dad has lived here for about 25 years in Windsor. And I moved up here just as the campaign was getting started. And so I was happy to work even a small bit on the campaign. That's not why I'm here tonight, except for the congratulations. Um, I also serve on the California Library Association Legislative and Advocacy Committee. And I um, serve on the board of the California Public Library Advocates, which is the state organization of friends, trustees, commissioners, foundations, etc. cetera. And, um, and I wanted to make sure that you all knew, and most of you probably do, that Senator Dodd has introduced SEA3, which will allow local communities more flexibility to do library bond measures. And so this means that um, he has picked up Senator Wolk's um, project and, um, and introduced it last week. And it would mean that um, uh, a small uh, a community like Sonoma um, could do uh, could put a library bond measure on and get 55 percent for our passage. So I hope that um, you will remember how painful it was <laughs> to get this one passed and give it your full support. Um, it's just getting started. He just launched it last week, but um, but I hope that we can get a lot of the people who supported the measure here to support that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, oh, we don't have them. Are there any other? That's the city council. If you wish to speak to the commission, please just come up to the. I don't have. Yes. Sorry. Name's Alan. You guys don't have any common cards or anything, so I had no idea how to come up here. I'm hearing disabled. Mr. Lear? Nice to meet you. Alan Moody. We've had some email discussions. And what I'm here to tell, ask you guys is to look at those email discussions. I know that each and every one of you have been representing as a successor agency to the library who is violating employee rights and does not have an American Disabilities Act coordinator. These things aren't very light subject matters, particularly for the liability they pose to the library. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? All right, seeing none. Um, we would at this time have adjourned into closed session, but now we will be adjourning in, until 7 p.m. when we'll reopen.
reconvene here in a second, as soon as everybody gets in their places. All right, it's uh, 7 p.m., and I'll call the Sonoma County Library Commission meeting back to order. And um, as some of you know, the closed session was canceled, so there is nothing to report from the closed session. Uh, but we wanted to wait for all of you to show up before we started again. <laughs> so at this time, uh, if uh, there were a library advisory board or friends reports, um, this is the time that we would hear those. And seeing none, I want to make a comment here. And, um, and, and the comment is that I would like us to uh, proceed with a recommendation that the previous commission chair had made um, to ask our, our, our library advisory boards or our friends groups uh, to, to, do, to participate in and um, share with the commission what activities they are doing. So I, to do that, I'm going to have to enlist all of the commissioners to help um, facilitate that, but I would absolutely like to start a list of monthly sign-ups um, for library advisory boards and friends groups from your communities to please come in and share with the commission um, what they're doing. Um, any, any comments on that? Any, any adverse reactions? Or do I have thumbs up to support that activity and have us um, be more engaged with our library advisory boards. Yes? OK. Um, so I think that I will send a list around. I've already prevailed upon the library advisory board in Sebastopol to think about this. And I would like to get them signed up to come and um, join us. Uh, so I think. A sign-up list is in order, and so as you go to your your library advisory board meetings, if you could please play this up a little bit and ask them to please come in and share with us. Um, all right, item number seven: commission and liaison reports. So we have item seven point one: commissioner reports. We can start down at the far end of the table. With Randall Neff, Commissioner Neff. Um, the town of Windsor is having a business expo tomorrow afternoon. The library will have a table there. Where we'll be talking about our future plans and our new online initiatives. Legos was last Saturday and a, and a big success. That's it. Great. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Heavenridge? The uh, Guerneville lab was canceled uh, due to an act of God. Uh, <laughs> Guerneville was flooded uh, at the time, so we were rescheduled. Okay. And Commissioner May? Lumicon happened <laughs> in Petaluma, the third Lumicon. Huge crowds, uh, almost couldn't move. Uh, my next door neighbors were there and real excited about the book sale. They got a wonderful thing, and it was, again, it's one of the wonders of the year. And I imagine there will definitely. And another thing I'll just quickly mention is it's important that it's a, it's a joint activity with the Petaluma Library and the two high school librarians are involved. So it's, it's a citywide uh, library activity and it really was quite wonderful. And our lab was postponed until later this month. Commissioner Foxen? I was unable to attend the January uh, lab meeting, but I did send them a letter um, sharing some of the information regarding what's happening on the commission and what's happening with Agassi and asking them to begin thinking about who they're connected to within the community, uh, what kind of people could they reach out to or organizations they could reach out to. So that was the start of that. Uh, the refresh is moving along. Pieces are beginning to come in. I understand. I haven't seen it yet, but we finally got the service desk. Um, and I want to, it's, it's in the notes in the director's report, but I want to thank the people that have worked on the DIY kits. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a do-it-yourself energy assessment, and it's kind of the groundwork or the uh, foundation for beginning energy changes within your home. And I understand there are long waiting lists for the kits. Um, they're being checked out on a regular basis, so I think it's really hugely successful. And thank you very much for putting it into play and working on it. And finally, if this is not necessarily library, but I put down, I was a library commissioner and I applied for a workshop down in LA at the Simon Wiesenthal Museum of Tolerance uh, for educators. And they accepted me as a library commissioner. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going down there for a two day conference. So thank you. Um, Commissioner McKenzie. Thank you. Um, I pretty much report every month that I go to the Chamber of Commerce Noon Times event, and I just want to say one more time how important I think it is. I, I know Commissioner Foxen was talking about making you know relationships and connections to the community. It's such an easy way to reach out to not only the business community, but the schools are represented, the political uh, folks are represented. So I went uh, this uh, time again, and then I also went, they also have mixers, so they do all the work. They set up all these meetings and you can just go. So I went to a mixer. This was a brand new apartment complex, very nice, uh, being open in Runner Park, and they had a chamber mixer, and I put my, my card in and schmoozed around. The last time I talked to one of the apartments uh, that opened up, we ended up putting a summer reading program over there. So it's really a valuable connection that can be made. And then this time I received a nice little thank you addressed to me as a library commissioner. So I think it really matters, and it's just such an easy way for us to connect. So I just wanted to bring up again, I hope people will work through their chambers of commerce and their own jurisdictions. I also wanted to mention that we had a gigantically successful Friends of the Library uh, book sale this weekend, and uh, uh, with a special member night on Wednesday night, we got, I don't know, whole lot of new members of Friends. There's really a nice buzz going on about joining the Friends and get their ID card. You know, it's really, it's really has a really good uh, energy to it. And lastly, I wanted to um, say that our literacy services person, who I know I'll mess her name up, but I believe it's Alyssa Adams, sent an email out to all the Friends groups and asked for donations to the county jail. The inmates need stuff to read, so... <clears throat> I said, well, the timing is just perfect because our book sale was this weekend. So I'm going to meet her tomorrow at the library and I'm going to give tons of books to go down to the jail. And I saw in here that I believe Keo has a, relation, a connection going on with the jail. So anyway, this is just one more way that we can kind of help some of our, our other folks in the community. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Garcia? Uh, I frequently go to the La Cien uh, meetings, the hundred, uh, once a month, and um, and I would represent. Uh, I'd say I'm a library commissioner, but uh, Angelina is the one who's working the room on behalf of the library, which is fine with me. Um, secondly, uh, along with Commissioner Heavenridge and Commissioner Ebright and other library staff, we have met with Linda Hopkins regarding. Uh, Rosalind. In terms of the Santa Rosa Lab, I will just uh, mention one thing, and uh, Commissioner Ebright can comment on the others, and that is that the Santa Rosa Lab is eager uh, to start conversations uh, looking at the next phase of expanding hours at each specific library and meeting the needs of uh, each community with these hours. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ebright? Um, yeah, what I will add about the Santa Rosa Lab meeting, uh, which was wonderful, is that um, the future looks very bright. Our uh, youth members of our Santa Rosa Lab are extraordinary young people, and we always have wonderful reports from them. Uh, one of them talked now about um, the Book to Action program, so the staff who helped put that together, I, I commend you as well. Uh, they read a book called H's for Hawk, Read the Book, Meet the Birds. Uh, there were birds available for the people, as well as books. A great, great idea. Um, our friends of the Santa Rosa Library reported that in 2016, they donated $39,000 to the library from book sales. Uh, that's quite wonderful, and thank you very much to them. 
Um, and then uh, Central Branch is the main library that I go to, and I go there regularly. And I have to say, I'd never thought of arranging books by color. Um, and there was a display called, Do You Have the Winter Blues? And all the books had blue covers, and I chose one, and it's a wonderful book. So thank you to whoever came up with that idea. Um, goofy, but, but great. So thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Hauser. Yes, um, the Sonoma Library Advisory Board is considering following Santa Rosa to change their date to coordinate with our meetings so that the agenda is out so that they can uh, comment upon items that are on our agenda. So I just want to let people know that that was an idea that uh, has borne fruit. Great. Great. And we're having a, a uh, sale in, in this coming week. Actually, next week. Great. Uh, Commissioner Grill? Um, I've been gone, so I don't really have anything to report other than, um, so twice I've had a short meeting inside the context of the library, and twice I've been chastised by individual citizens for um, making too much noise, and um, um, and I think, it le I, th I think it's within the context of our reorganization of our library so we got more quiet rooms. That's all. It's just, it's a needed thing. So actually I was with Reese and I were meeting uh, there <laughs> last week and somebody came over and gave us the dickens. <laughs> and, uh, but it, you know, it's okay. It was, it was just, that's all. Okay. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to um, uh, shout out to the youth members at the Sebastopol Lab who are working uh, not only to put articles in the student newspaper about activities that the library is doing that students would be interested in, but they are um, working with the high school librarian to, um, you know, to coordinate some of the, the things that the library and the high school is doing. And they are also um, working to share with teachers um, uh, events that might coincide with the curriculum um, that they're sharing with their students, and I believe that's mostly with the English teachers. But um, and uh, Angelina uh, Cassiopa, uh, our community engagement uh, person for the library, came to the Sebastopol Lab, and they are they scheduled a. April 5th public forum to do outreach um, to the community about the hours that the community of Sebastopol would like to see happen at their library. So they will be, and Matthew will be working with Angelina to um, uh, f uh, figure out exactly how that forum will work. But that's in progress. And I do <clears throat> want to thank all the commissioners for their reports. I would really, I think you all did a great job and I really enjoyed hearing about what you're sharing. Um, I, I think it's great that we're sort of uh, moving more towards um, talking about the kind of advocacy that you as commissioners are doing and the outreach to the community. And I, I would like to do more of that myself. And I, I think it's, um, it's a really good forum for us to do that. So we'll move on at this time to the committee and liaison reports, item 7.2. The first item is <clears throat> the Directory Evaluation Committee, and um, the chair of that committee is absent, so I'll just do a brief report. The committee is um, determined to finish work on the 360 um, evaluation uh, portion. So um, uh, we, we would like to get that uh, together within the next few weeks and, um, and also figure out a good way to um, send that out. So we'll be working closely with uh, Director Lear to, to get that accomplished. Um, and that's really all we had to report. Um, moving on to the Finance Committee report, Barbara McKenzie. Yes, thank you. Um, the Finance Committee is uh, very busy. We have a lot of things on our plate. Um, we met on Monday, January 23rd in the library conference room. Commissioner McKenzie Whistler, Neff, and Hauser, and Director Lear and CFO Neiman were there, and Commissioner Foxen was present by, the, by phone. Commissioner Garcia also attended as a member of the public, and one other member of the public uh, attended. He didn't give his name, but he was there to talk about uh, additional library hours. 
Under announcements, Director Lear reported that the Santa Rosa City franchise fees of up to $150,000 are being offered to the library to purchase media equipment to be used for new public video access facilities. And he also reported that the Roseland Coalition is looking for a fiduciary as they fundraise for a permanent Roseland branch. More information to come on that. The December monthly financial reports are reviewed and discussed. Of note, tax revenue of nearly $10 million was received in December as expected and an initial payment to the Sonoma County of close to $40,000 for the Cloverdale refresh was made. The cost for staff to open on Mondays and add some additional evening hours beginning in April were discussed and the Finance Committee was unanimous in its support of a budget adjustment to pay for these costs. That will be before us tonight. No transfer from reserves will be required to cover these costs. Additional budget adjustments will be forthcoming and will be reviewed by the Finance Committee. A lengthy discussion ensued regarding Commissioner input on the budget and on expenditure of Measure Y funds. Recommendations will be forthcoming to the Commission, but will include requests for reports from divi uh, division heads as part of the budget process. We want to hear more um, detail from the division heads about what's going on in their department and the requests and so forth. Additional meetings or workshops to discuss Measure Y funds, and also a fall meeting to address planning and priority setting for the Commission for the next year. We're thinking this is something that we could do on an annual basis. This was Director Lear's idea. We thought it was a really good one. As part of the planning for Measure Y funds, input from the labs was felt to be important, and also now that labs uh, and also that labs might also hold community meetings. I'm happy to hear that one has already been scheduled. That's great. Um, and we were advised that the outreach co coordinator is working on this right now. So I'm glad to hear that tonight. We had agendized for a further discussion the fund balance policy and the OPEB action plan, but due to lack of time and the, our extended converse, our discussion about these other matters, both these items will be carried over. We are adding an extra meeting for Finance Committee, and it's scheduled for next Monday, the 13th at 2.30 in the conference room. After that, the next regularly scheduled meeting will be held on February 27th, which is, again, a change in date because the third Monday of the month is a holiday. So anyway, we also have a meeting on February 13th and another one on February 27th. And thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, now to the Advocacy Committee, uh, Commissioner Foxen. The Advocacy Committee is going to be meeting on February 27th because I'm going to be out of town next week. Um, so corresponding, we haven't really had a meeting since, but I am curious to know how many of you have reached out to your appointing bodies since Measure Y has passed to thank them for their work? So, okay, good. And for those of you that haven't been able to, I would recommend that we do that somehow. If not actually going, at least writing them a letter and thanking them so that everybody knows that we appreciate the support they gave us. And at that meeting, we're also, one of the things that we are going to be talking, because I had just found out about it, oh, right after it came out, I saw the CLA announcement about uh, the measure for the 55%. And it's really important. We would have had Measure M because we were at 63% the last time. And it would have made a great difference to us. So if we can do that for other libraries so that they get their money when they go before their people for uh, uh, some sort of local measure, that would be great. And we will have to go back in a few years, more than likely, for another time around. So it would be nice to get that in place. So begin to think about how you can support that and how the commission as a whole can support that. So thank you. Can I ask a question about that? Yes. Is the bond for things like Measure Y or is it for building? For or capital improvements. Capital improvements? For capital, okay. no, 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 no. For capital improvements, I believe that it's already 55%. I think this is for other kinds, if okay. I'm correct. No? It's for only capital improvements? Okay. Then that puts a whole. Okay. Because I thought it was already at 55% for capital <laughs> improvements. No. Okay. Okay, um, and wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, other questions, Paul Grove? Um Yeah, I have a question within the context of CAPEX or capital, and capital expenditures. Is that what we're talking about? Would mm -hmm. that be, uh, 
library expansions? What, what would fall under that category? Building programs. Building programs. Okay. Thank you. Which, when you think about it, is coming along at a good time for Roseland. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll have to look at that close, more closely. Um, so now moving on to 7.2.4, Foundation Liaison, Commissioner Garcia. The Foundation has just changed leadership, and I will be attending the meeting. Uh, so they asked that we not attend because it had to do with um, their own structure and their board members. I will be attending their next meeting February 15th. Okay, thank you very much. And there is no report from the Ad Hoc OPEB Retirement Committee. Um, moving on to standard operating procedures. Uh, I guess that's my report also. <laughs> so uh, we have met, we met for the first time in quite a bit of time and we um, are determined to move up our schedule and speed up the work. So we spent some time um, uh, working on um, a commission um, handbook as to protocols for the commissioners and um, jump in if there's anything else. Uh, oh, and we, uh, we uh, walked through a process that can help us make decisions in a more rapid manner. So um, the, we're planning to meet again in a couple of weeks, and I think we have a date, but I think we have a date that's firm at this point, the 15th of February. Okay. I have something to say about that, too. That, that model that we used and shared in that meeting was um, a model that I had learned in, uh, with facilitators and planning meetings and things. And I think if, if we get this one squared away, it's something that all of us could use within the context as a fundamental model that we could just plug in variables and, and move our committees along. I mean, it's absolutely, I wouldn't say it's a no-brainer, but it's, it really is a very egalitarian uh, kind of model that brings everybody's input into the situation and then distills it to an end product. Right, and I think it's something that we'll refine and uh, share with the commission at um, a workshop. So, yeah. Okay, so that is the end of the commission liaison reports. Now we move on to the approval of minutes. And uh, just before we go through this process, I wanted to point out that we're, we're also going to try to speed up the process of minutes approval. And so to that end, uh, we're committed to um, having the draft minutes um, published within a few, you know, within no more than 10 days, probably, of a commission meeting. They'll be posted on the website and sent to the commissioners for uh, review and any kind of changes as far as nit nitpicky grammatical changes and, um, and some substance, you know, if a, if a wrong word was used. But it's something that's easy to go back and check against the video, although not maybe last meeting because the meeting went until 11 p.m. and so it's a really long video. Um, but however, so that's our process. And uh, in the future, possibly not at the next meeting, but in the future, I would like to have us have the approval of the minutes on the consent calendar so that we can save some time. All right, so uh, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'm so moved. Second. Second. I have the Commissioner Garcia and Tim May. Uh, was that correct? Uh, okay. On the, any any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. So um, now we're moving on to the consent calendar. And uh, there are some items, as I think I mentioned earlier, that are off the consent calendar. <laughs> That's quite a diagram now. Um, so, okay, so we do not have um, item 10.3 is no longer on the consent calendar. And 10.4. Oh, 10.4. Is that correct? Correct. 
Yes, okay. Yes, okay, so on the consent calendar we have item 10.1 and 10.2. All right, then we'll be taking that off the consent calendar then. And that leaves, um, that leaves 10.1 on the consent calendar. All right, so. Excuse me, I wanted to pull that. Okay, so we no sure. longer have a consent calendar. <laughs> um, so where shall we, so we have, 10.1 is going to be moved to where? All of them need to go to action items. Action items by motion? Yes. Or resolution? So we have uh, 10.4 is under resolution. 10.3 is under motion. 10.1 is under motion. Is that correct? Correct. Right. And uh, ten point two would be under resolution. I think is that correct? No, I think it's it's not a it's not a resolution. It's a motion, I think. Motion. A motion. Motion. Okay. Ten point two is a motion. Action items by motion. Okay. So uh, so then that being said, we're skipping the consent calendar. And we're going down to item 11. Did you have something, Commissioner Garcia? No, okay. Yes, I'm getting there. Um, so we're going down to the discussion items and um, Director Lear has um, graciously um, suggested that the Rosen Coalition presentation be moved up to the first topic. They'll be um, just down at, uh, under item 12 or 13, depending on which ones they are. So yours was 10.2, and that will be under uh, item 12, which is action items by motion. It'll be moved there. You're welcome. Good evening, my name is Pat Cuda, and I'm with the Coalition to Support the Rosen Library. It's not on? Now, it, now it's on. Uh, how's that? Oh, That's yeah. perfect. Okay. So I'm here with the steering committee members of the Coalition to Support the Rosen Library. I'd like to introduce you to Sharon, Des Sharon Deseret, Dan Jen Jenkins, and Norma Ellis. Jack Tibbetts is also on our steering committee and couldn't be here tonight. We're here to uh, gain the, coalition, uh, the Commission's endorsement to secure a permanent library branch in, the Rose, in Roseland and to designate the Coalition as your agent to achieve that goal. The Coalition Steering Committee was formed soon after your Roseland branch was opened. Our membership includes three organizations, the Friends of the Santa Rosa Library, Santa Rosa Together, and the Sonoma County Public Library Foundation. We have a growing roster of 26 community leader endorsements, endorsers and over 200 previous donors who helped the opening of the Rosen Library. The opportunity before you, you have had, already had a presentation from the Community Development Commission and from Mid Peninsula Housing, so you are aware of the opportunity to create a permanent library in shared space with the Boys and Girls Club in Roseland. The coalition stands ready to secure the funding needed to achieve this permanent facility. We're coordinating with the library staff, with the county, the city, and private funders. Commissioner Linda Garcia is serving as our liaison, and we have an MOU with the library outlining the duties and responsibilities. Our plan. In coordination with the library director, the CDC, Community Development Commission, and Efren Carrillo, we have created a four-part fundraising strategy that includes participation of the city of Santa Rosa, the county, and community investors to finance the building of the, uh, the creation of the library building. 
tenant improvements on the building would be secured by the library funding. We have already presented our request of $1 million to the City of Santa Rosa. We have met with each council person and made an appeal at the council's budget planning session last month. We have met with County Supervisor Linda Hopkins and will craft a strategy to gain similar support and an allocation from the county. We are seeking foundation funding and crafting a capital campaign to secure $700,000 to $1 million plus to reach the goal. We are asking your support in our efforts. And I can answer any questions. We hope to meet with your finance committee at the next meeting to discuss financial uh, partnership or fiscal, fiscal sponsorship. Any questions from the commission? Comments? Commissioner Hauser? Tonight, somebody in the public uh, spoke about having a separate building instead of a shared building. Uh, I just wanted your comments about that. Uh, we're, as a coalition, not at all involved. The, the library will designate the space and do all the planning on the space. We're here to make the, the li permanent library happen, but it's really up to the, you and the library to design, the library staff to, to design the library. So. Just give us our marching orders. We want to see a permanent library in this community. If, if I could speak to that for just a second. Um, currently, you know, we are in a shared space with the Boys and Girls Club. We share the same physical space, different hours of the day. Um, the current blueprint for a permanent library would have dedicated space for the library in the Boys and Girls Club, where the library would have, right now, the first floor of the building and the Boys and Girls Club would have the second floor as well as a gym. So in that sense, they are distinct. Go ahead. I, I, I imagine that we're still in the, after we get it built, who's responsible for it, negotiations? Negotiations in what sense? In other words, with the exception of the uh, annex, all of our buildings are owned either by the county or the cities. This building will be owned by? Right. So, right, um, you know, it's early in the game with talking about that stuff, but when it has come up with the, the CDC and MidPen, um, speaking from my perspective, you know, I said that I would certainly hope that it would either follow the current model where either the city of Santa Rosa or the county would hold the deed or where it would be one of the few buildings such as the annex where we hold the deed. So it's still to be decided. Okay. Yes. Commissioner McKenzie. Hi. I first of all want to thank you all volunteers for stepping up and doing this. It's a monumental effort and much appreciated. Thank you. And it wasn't that long ago, and we all know that it was impossible to have a library in Roseland. So this is just tremendous. I really appreciate your time and effort that you're all putting into it. Do you have a fundraising goal? Uh, well, we were participating in the advocacy of getting the, securing the funding from the county and the city, depending on our ask is a million dollars each. Based on a preliminary estimate, we would have to raise, if we were successful in that, we'd have to raise another between a million, 700,000 and a million dollars based on kind of fluffy estimates from Mid Peninsula on what it would cost and the square footage that we're looking at. So, yes, we've already started on a capital, community capital uh, campaign structure, but until we have plans and a real budget, it's hard to ask people. So, we're very much prepared. We're creating lists. Today I submitted a letter of intent to a foundation for a sizable amount as well. So we're well on our way, but until we get a home, <laughs> a fiscal home, and until we get um, a budget, we're, yeah. we're it's kind of chicken sacheting and down the road. <laughs> and so the foundations that you'll be asking money for, is, it's beyond the community foundation locally. You're looking at foundations, plural? I didn't say the community foundation. It's not the community foundation that we're approaching. I don't think they do capital campaigns. But yes, we will be looking for any and all funders, but also asking people to make sizable. We hope to get maybe 50% from major donors. Okay. And then we have, like I said, a list of 200 people who donated to, to help open the Rosen Library. And we hope to 
bring them along as well, but we're creating lists and Rolodexes and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Sure. With the Community Foundation, a lot of the people who are giving money have a, a, a directed fund that yes. they direct every year. And it would be, you may not be getting money out of the right. foundation itself, but if you could get on a list of saying this is a nice project that you might want to look at to all those people with their individual funds. We were able to get funding through that mechanism to help. I was on the uh, Sonoma County Public Library Foundation, and when we were raising money to help open the Rosen Library, we did meet with Jay Mullineau. We did get some referrals, and they were very successful. So we will definitely, that's part of our strategy. Thank you. Tim, sorry. Yes, um, I'm still back to whose building is it, but um, if if we're talking about a shared building, yes. are we raising money for the first floor and somebody's raising money for the second uh, floor? The, the, the lawyers tell us that it would be like a condominium, so yes, we would raise the money for the space that we physically inhabit, just like a condominium set up so okay. yes uh, and we've already oh I we have met with the boys and girls club we feel that it's a very powerful combined campaign we feel totally collaborative with them and as they with us and I think we can do a very good job in selling the issue to the community so we definitely are in lockstep with the boys and girls club and I thank you also yes thank you all right um, all right. Well, thank you so much, sure. Pat. Thank you, Pat, for it's all great right. to hear hard this work update and love. And thank you. It's been really fun. It's been really fun. Somebody talking about fundraising. Uh, yes, please <laughs> come down. I'd like to use that overhead projector. I don't know. I know how to operate it. All you got to do is let me have the screen there. Yeah, this bad boy. You know, guys, we don't have it linked in. 21st Century City Council. We do it all the time. Well, then we'll just pull this back down, and I'll just give it to you in the verbal approach and show you something that I would have put up for everyone. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. I am from Roseland, and I've been from there all my life. A really long time, as you can see by my lack of hair up there. So... You guys ever watch Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? Remember that line in there? Who are those guys? That's kind of a really neat line when you think about it. And it came to mind today as I got my first chance to meet the folks on the Roseland Coalition, even though I've been involved in the Roseland Village Task Group and the Roseland Specific Plan Steering Group and been involved in all kinds of things. And then I looked at the names in the back of the coalition that are supporting, and I realized, oh, okay, I see what's up. There's one name on there from Roseland. She doesn't live in Roseland anymore out of those 24 people. And so what we have here is really nice people, and I really like Ms. Kuda, and I just met the other three folks there. But essentially, the whole program has been what they're working up for what we're going to get. And I really think it's very important that you involve Roseland residents in this right from the get-go. And <clears throat> this question about who's going to own it and will it be a condominium and who gets what floor, these kinds of things are going to become more complex. And while Ms. Kuda said, well, we're not a part of the design team, we're just raising money. <clears throat> I look at these names on here and I know a lot of these people and I know how things shake. I uh, used to go to Roseland School Board meetings, and I know the former director, supervisor there, and uh, former mayor we got here, Jane Bender, and a bunch of different folks. And typically it's their way or the highway. They're not really interested in what you folks in Roseland want. They're basically doing it because they got their plan. And you got other folks on here. I know Mr. Carrillo. I talked with him before he got elected and followed him all the way through on different things. It's really important that you folks, as the ones who are going to be responsible for the design, get Roseland residents involved. 
As you can see by what's already occurred, no one else has already reached out. Miss Magdalena Ridley has moved away. She was the one that grew up in Roseland. I know her pretty well. And yet this was all done in secret. She's never talked with me about this at all. I know Jack Tibbetts. I know all these guys. I mean, I could walk up to most of them on this list and know they don't live in Roseland. Gay LeBaron's never lived in Roseland. So hopefully you understand what I'm trying to get at. It's not about us trying to say we want to disrupt their apple cart. It's about us saying, hey, you're doing something that's going to have a massive impact upon a community. And the best way to get what you want is to work with those members of the community right from the beginning, work with them on the design. Because I've already heard from a lot of people, they want a separate library. And it shouldn't be just what MedPen wants. I, I was on the team that picked MedPen, and then on the team that picked the Boys and Girls Club and the library to be involved as the nonprofits. So <clears throat> it's really the kind of thing where I'm coming to advocate to you folks because you're going to be the ones that work with the design and choose, apparently, who is going to be given the contracts to do the design and then make the decisions as to who owns the building. This is all pretty you know, important stuff, especially for taxpayers and especially for the Roseland residents over there who I've advocated for this library since I was a boy. But at the same time, I know that because Sometimes folks are uncomfortable with the residents. They look at us like, ooh, you guys kind of stir the pot. They may not want us down there. You folks should be the ones that say, well, hey, we want our, our citizens involved. We want our people that are going to pay for the tax that just came through and a bond, if we're going to get a bond. So please, look at it in, in the positive light and see it like, hey, we can really get some good things going here if we work with those residents and make a really good situation. I want two buildings. I don't want that condominium thing. That's, that won't work. I can already tell you something's going to go wrong there. I mean, it's just, it's got wrong written on all over it. But if you get two separate buildings, nice, dedicated library for you folks, the Boys and Girls Club will be doing their thing with their gym, things will go really well, believe me. And I'll go out there, I'll start knocking on the rich people's doors right away, because I'm not bashful about that. Their people live over here in Roseland. Those guys making big dollars, doing big stuff, they got their employees over there. So um, the clock is winding down, I got a little extra time, but sometimes that's more helpful when you think about it. It's not just about how much time you used, it's about the message you brought to you from Rosalind, from the heart. I've been doing this since I was a kid to try and make it better over there. And you can work with us and we'll get the best thing you ever imagined. All righty, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Ms. Tuda and the coalition. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, well, thank you very much for the presentation. And um, we'll move on at this point to the director's report. Director Lear. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to be brief again this month. Uh, you have my full report in the packet. A couple of things I was going to pull out. Um, one is just to stress that quite a bit of what I'm working on right now, along with Ken and Vicki and Keo and others, is the opening on Mondays, the big recruitment that's going on, and then also determining what services uh, we need to fund in addition to hiring the staff to open on Mondays, you know, we're going to want to have events on those days that the library is now open, more books and that. So um, that's one of the big projects right now. And we'll come to the commission in March with what we think the services that go along with the extra hours will cost. A quick update um, to my director's report. I wrote that earlier. Uh, well, I wrote it several weeks ago. Um, in the report, I said that there would be a budget adjustment associated with funding the staffing. Uh, but since I wrote that, our CFO has determined that the cost for the staffing that we'll bring on board April through June can be absorbed within the current staffing budget. Uh, so that's changed since I wrote my report. Um, yeah, the other, you know, something that's Taking up a good deal of my time was what was presented to us just now. There's 
things are moving very quickly around the Roseland Village project. There's community meetings that continue to occur, uh, meeting with the Community Development Commission. We've hired an architect uh, to start doing some basic floor plans to, to verify that, that we can run uh, a quality library system with the floor space that we're liable to be allocated. Um, but it's an exciting project, but um, again, there's quite a bit of moving parts as Tim's pointed out around who would end up with the deed and that a lot of that still has to be determined, but I'm very, very pleased that we've gotten to this point. When I started just a couple years ago, I didn't really see a path forward on a new Roseland and, and now it seems like we're getting close. Lastly, I'm super excited and I know Ken is because Ken's been filling uh, the shoes of the HR manager, but we do have a new HR manager hired, uh, Suzanne Silva, she'll start tomorrow. Uh, she has a background in uh, working for various transit authorities. Uh, she's been in HR over 20 years, also has an MBA, I believe, uh, so a very talented lady, and, and we couldn't be more excited to welcome her tomorrow and, and get her busy. Um, and we'll be sure to introduce her to you all next month. And those are really the things that I wanted to highlight, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Director, I mean, Commissioner McKenzie, sorry. Yes, I just, um, as always, there's tons of stuff going on. It's great. And um, I always love reading your report. This probably sounds really minor, but I love the fact that we're going to get this ad in the uh, Press Democrat. But I was mildly disturbed. It was a picture of two boys using the library. It just, you know, I just kind of thought, you know, where's the girls? <laughs> so I didn't know if that picture could be adjusted. <laughs> Tim. Uh, I was appreciating the revised statement of votes cast, and I apologize to Rohnert Park and uh, Windsor, but it looks like basically Rohnert Park and Windsor, basically overall the county, the results are wonderful to see. So that was, thank you for the revised numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? All right. Then I guess we will move on to, um, so, so this is always confusing to me because we have the verbal report and it kind of bleeds over into the written report. So are there any items that want, need to be called out from the written report of specialty areas like the collections or any, um, no, yes? Any items, uh, Commissioner May? Yeah, I was just thinking about, um, and I, I probably needed to look at this a little bit more closely, but with all of our new programs, Hoopla, Zinio, Linda, there are limitations. And I'm wondering, I know I, the Linda limitations I heard about at a meeting at the Petaluma Library, but it's like there are only a certain number of slots per day. And, uh, yeah? I'll respond to that. Okay. First of all, uh, is your mic on? I, I, yeah, now it is. So lynda.com has, um, has 75 simultaneous users. Okay. And um, we did lots of vetting of library systems around the country. And 75, has, that limit has never been hit. So if you're, if you're, having trouble getting access to lynda.com, just make sure you know your library card and PIN number. Um, we, um, the first log on for a couple of people were problematic because they couldn't remember their PINs, so we had to go in and change their PIN numbers for them. But um, bottom line is you shouldn't be hitting any ceiling at all on okay. lynda.com. I just um, want to be sure that the public is aware yeah. because that's one of the things I hear most is right. we need more. Well, and, and I think the truth be told, um, we've probably done uh, the most excellent job with, with the Hoopla digital uh, deployment because 
um, we're just getting hammered, and we, you know, it's getting used and used and used, and it's because it's a great surface. Right. And you know, we just need to. Uh, we we have X amount of dollars, like we have for everything. So um, it is what it is right now, and we hope that. Um, you know, when we're budgeting for 2017, 2018, um, we're going to crank it up a bit. But it is what it is right now. And um, as we look into moving to April, uh, May, and June, we're probably going to add a little bit more to that if we can as well. Um, but that that service is wildly popular because there's no waiting for the e-books, uh, you know, um, and our statistics are out the roof. And we were talking to um, the people at Hoopla Digital, and they were saying no one keeps going in an upward trajectory the way Sonoma County Library is going with this. And it's because we've integrated it right into the catalog. So when you do a, a search for something in our online catalog, you can find the Hoopla things too. And I think that's a large part of why um, it keeps going in that upward trajectory. Okay, thank I just, my issue is that we are able to explain to the public, because that's basically what I sure. hear, is I tried to get something from Hoopla and I couldn't, but apparently if I try to log in from 4 to 6 p.m., I have the, you know, it's, it's an interesting problem. Okay, that's all. All right, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, Commissioner Heavenridge has a comment or a question. I could have turned on my mic and said something. But, um, yeah, I just, under, under public services, I just wanted to make note of the adult literacy program uh, model submission that was uh, published online by a programming uh, librarian. And we've really, um, I've really seen uh, our adult literacy program grow and which is near and dear to my heart, of course. And uh, I think as a commission, we should recognize that and support uh, the lit adult literacy program in all our branches and uh, hope we can build that program because we're um, obviously the staff is part time, basically, and we want to increase that. There's a bigger and bigger, greater need in Sonoma for uh, this program. Uh, with a lot of the other literacy programs going away. So um, I, I'm going to keep bringing that up in the commission and, and, and hope to see some movement increasing the staff there and, and the opportunities in the other branches. Thank you. Commissioner McKenzie. Just three quick things. I wanted to comment on the Wi-Fi and Runner Park uh, Katati branch. I can, it's just tremendous difference. It's just Fabulous! It's so much better. Thank you, Vicki, and your staff. Uh, secondly, under collections and materials management, um, I let the city of Runner Park know that it looks like uh, at least the preferred space right now for expansion is on State Farm Drive Runner Park, so I think that's really wonderful. And I was just curious if the truck parking is at that same building. Yes, yes everything is there, okay. And then under um, collections, the questions I keep getting, for some reason, I keep running into book club people, and they're wondering about collections, uh, expanded ability for book clubs to get more copies of recent books, and what we're looking at for that with our new budget. You want to speak to that, David? Hi, David Dodd, collections manager. Um, I had not heard this feedback prior to just now. So um, that said, we do have a plan to robustly move in with our new money and buy lots of copies of very popular titles. And we're going to be doing that primarily through uh, the implementation of a lease plan, which a lease plan allows you to have a lot of books that are really popular while they're popular. And then when they're no longer popular, when they begin to land on the shelves and accumulate and pile up, send them back and get the next set of popular, way for popular books in. So we have, um, yeah, it's, a lot of libraries do this. It's a lease option of books. And it really prevents you from having to discard a lot of used library copies and, you know, friends, groups, pretty much a wash in these kind of things and not 
doing so well with them. So we, this will be a rotating lots more copies. And similarly with our what we call our Lucky Day collection, that will also be bolstered by the lease program. So we'll be going in there full bore and attempting to have enough. Now whether we'll have enough for book clubs to get sufficient copies on demand for their own book club out in the community. You're talking about community book clubs as opposed to in the library, right? Yeah, that that's always a strategic thing for those book clubs and I would recommend that they look at always selecting a title that's going to be available in more copies and that might not be the most current bestseller. It might be something that's available in trade paperback or something that we read as a book club selection last year or the year before, in which case you can get 40 copies from our um, closed stacks. So those are some options. I know. I've seen them down there in closed stacks. So how do, do we know? Is it, How would a book club know what we have in our closed stacks in there's, terms of 40 a, copies? There's a big list on all of the... Um, on the website of on all the of website. the previous book club selections. Oh, okay. And if they just talk to the librarian there at Roner Park, you know, talk to any of the people on the staff there, they'll arrange to have those sent for the book club. Great, thank you. Sure thing. Anything else while I'm here? All right. All right, thank you, David, for that information. Um, so any other things about the monthly activities? All right, then we will... Um, Move on to the monthly financial reports. Um, Commissioner McKenzie hit on most of the highlights of uh, the financial report, which starts on page 45. Um, as she said, we received in December just a little bit short of $10 million in property tax revenue. <coughs> and that ripples through uh, the financial statements, makes our cash balance go up and, uh, uh, and uh, puts our revenue over expense for the year to date. Um, so that's happened. We get another payment in April for the, with that. And uh, the two items down below on page 45 that were over $25,000 that need to be reported was a PG&E. And as Commissioner McKenzie said, we uh, paid through the county $38,000 for, I think, part of the furniture of the Cloverdale refresh in December. <clears throat> Other than that, uh, any questions? Commissioner May? I want to be sure I understood that what uh, uh, Director Lear said that essentially without a budget announced, a budget with, with no budget adjustment, we can cover the positions for April. Yes. Because I've been waiting to go to my city council with an update on what's happening until I was sure we had the funding. Okay. And right. we hadn't voted on a budget adjustment. But now, we'll, as a commission, we'll need to make no changes to make that happen. Correct. Um, it's just approving the positions, uh, which I think is in section right. 12. OK. Yes. Sounds good. Yay. Anything else? OK. Uh, thank you very much, Ken. Um, so that takes us to 11.4 Commission Retreat slash Workshop Study Session. And I'll report um, that I met with Reese uh, Foxen, Commissioner Foxen, and we discussed uh, topics for um, a commissioner retreat and workshop and um, I think we decided that it would be beneficial to attempt to have two such uh, uh, workshops uh, before the start of the fiscal year so we were looking at a date in March of March 25th and a date in June to be determined. Um, so we just wanted to get a rough idea from commissioners if March 25th, um, and we'll have birthday cake for Commissioner Garcia that day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she has no excuse, no. <laughs> um, and we're looking at probably about 
probably five to six hours for a workshop. Uh, we would love to have Director Lear and um, management staff join us for at least, I mean, it, it will be a public meeting, obviously, um, but, uh, you know, we have a list of things that commissioners need to work on, but one of the things would be to, um, you know, uh, standardized communication um, and working relationships between the commission and management. Um, so that's um, that's not exactly down to the detail I think that we got, but Reese, I don't know if you want to uh, jump in on anything. Um, and Reese is also looking at a, about three different facilitators as possible selections. We have a location that we believe that we can have it at, and that's at the Sonoma State University Library. Um, that's been offered, but we'll have to firm that up. Um, comments? That re reminds me of something I forgot to ask in the financial report. Um, how are we paying for the uh, space and the, uh, and the uh, facilitation? Uh, all good questions. <laughs> we don't have a plan. We don't have a firm plan. In the past, we've had the generous help from a private foundation. Um, but we've talked about a few different things. I don't know if everybody has used their commission allowance. That's what I was allowance. going to ask in the... Um, but it's something that perhaps the finance committee could... Um, we could work with Ken on to figure that out. Um, I think that the... The facility itself, there will be no charge for that. Um, but the facilitator, definitely, there will be a cost. Okay. And uh, that reminds me that either finance committee or financial reports, I'm, I noticed when I went through that the monies that we've given for the labs and for commission expenses seem to not be being spent. And I'm wondering if we need to right. look at that. Right, and that is something I would love the labs to share with us, what they do with it. I know Sebastopol talks about using it. I don't know if they have ever end up putting in for it, though. Um, so uh, any other comments about the retreat? Is the 25th of March look like a possible date for people so that we can... Um, things have to kind of fall into place for a date, for a facilitator, and for a place. Is there anybody who knows they can't make it? Okay. I kind of hate to have it on somebody's birthday. I'm okay with that. We're not going to go past 5 o'clock, right? No. <laughs> no, you won't. Let's move on. Okay. Um, all right, so Reese and I will work with that and, um, and share more thoughts later and we'll firm up the place and the agenda I think um, alright so uh, any other comments about any of the discussion items that I might have missed okay so moving on to actions by motion we have a number of things here we have shall we start with 12.1 um, approve new schedule of library hours and services. So moved. Do I have a second? Uh, I'll second. 12.1. All right, and just a second. So any comments from the commission on this item? But he has somebody. Yes, I'll. All right, any comments from the public? about this item, 12.1. Is this on? Yes. Okay. Just a minute. I can hear it. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Michael Hilbert, and I live in the general area of Santa Rosa, outside the city limits. I, I go to uh, both uh, downtown and uh, Cotting Town and also Sebastopol Libraries. But anyway, I made a comment to the Finance Subcommittee um, about what I'd like to see as far as um, 
allocation of hours with this new enhanced budget. And what I suggested is I thought it would serve the public better if um, you actually would think about, uh, well, at least give some consideration to what uh, Contra Costa County does, and, and, and namely that is um, they're open till 8 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And not necessarily 10 to 8 all those days, but um, you know, maybe 10 to 8 or 12 to 8. But anyway, 8 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is what they do. And um, it's my feeling that it would be better for the public because um, too many people are inconvenienced to, to get there after work before closing time, given all other errands and whatever. So I just think, you know, especially in the summertime, it would be nice if it would be open later more than two days a week. And and also, I don't necessarily think staying open till nine is all that good because not not many people need it, really want it to be open till nine. I think eight would be a good cutoff. And um, in general, I think, you know, Contra Costa County does it better with uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday till eight. And, and um, you, I think you could make that work if you wanted to. Um, do you want to respond now or wait? OK. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Rosen, the unincorporated part right now, but it's surrounded by Santa Rosa. So I use the Santa Rosa branch, the Roseland branch. I've been to Cotty Town branch, Rincon Valley branch go over to Spassable occasionally and get to go to other places too when I'm traveling a bit. I like the idea of keeping the library open every day of the week if possible, except for the official holidays that the state takes off. And also the idea of having the library open until 8 o'clock in the evening. And that includes on Friday and Saturday. And one of the reasons why is because it's a good deterrent for youth to have something better to do. Libraries are a good thing for youth in many, many ways. And I'm sure all of you have your own personal opinions about that. But I know when I was a youngster that there were diversions, if you would, and distractions, things that might not have been such a good idea for a young teen to be out doing at the time. And I liked books. I liked the library. And that was a spot where you could go and have a little respite and a little break away from some of the more uh, peer pressure. That's the term that we use now, uh, especially with teenagers. So I just was hoping that now that you've got an enhanced budget, and uh, I'm sure everybody's already grabbing for money and you're already broke in a sense, but it would sure would be nice to have the libraries open every day of the week and have them open until eight in the evenings at least i know sunday you probably want to close earlier people want to get home but uh friday and saturdays especially is a great way to keep youth away from some of the more negative influences that might be out there thank you okay thank you um any members of the commission commissioner i'd, I'd like to say something uh, I'm on the Finance Committee, and, and we've discussed this quite a bit, and I want to make a couple of points. We're just getting started. This is kind of an experiment. This is the first thing. This is a response to the, to the public to say, thank you for passing Measure Y. We want to show we're getting right at you. I want to tell you, uh, the staff has just about worked themselves to death trying to get this organized. Uh, it's a lot of work adding a lot of, uh, of extra employees and so forth. But we're just getting started. It's an experiment, whether it's going to be 10 to 9 or 10 to 8 or something like that. That's still kind of open. Traditionally, 25 years ago, the library branches, except for Central, were open from 9.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9.30 to 6 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. And then... Uh, they were closed on Sunday except for Central, which was open. And personally, I'd like to see us go back to that 
kind of thing as, as a return to what was there. Uh, we're not out of money, but we're trying to figure out where we're going before we get there. So don't feel that this is shutting you out, that we're not going to have more, or maybe we're not going to cut back from nine to eight, depending on how things work out. We just need to find out where we're going and what's happening. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Commissioner Foxen? Yeah, I, uh, in addition to what Tom just said, I believe also that um, this is just the initial move to open on Mondays and extend Wednesday, that there are plans in the future for the Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday and Sunday. And um, I believe also and correct me if I'm wrong, we are not getting any of the Measure Y money until July, and this Monday opening is being done on our current budget, taking money as we stand now without using Measure Y money. So this is a gift to the community at this point in time until Measure Y is actually up and running. So thank you. Anybody else? Commissioner May? And my understanding is that uh, the community outreach person is speaking to the labs about uh, alternative schedules and so forth. So if a member of the public would like to be able to speak to their lab about this issue, that's another method of getting your opinion heard. Great. Thank you very much. All right. So I, I, there is a motion and second. on the table. Um, and I don't remember who made it, but... Uh, I second it. Okay. Commissioner Garcia and Commissioner Hauser. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So I'd say that's unanimous. So that's item 12.1. And so I would like to take item 10.3, which is Sonoma County 2017 Annual Library Closures next. And do I have so moved. a motion? Yes. And that is to approve the 2017 library closures calendar for May 2017 through December 2017. And we have a uh, motion. Move. And Commissioner Hauser will second. Oh, I think Commissioner I'll Garcia moved. Whatever. Is that correct? And then, are you seconding? Second. Okay. Okay. Um, any comments about this, Commissioner McKenzie? Yeah, for discussion, I just um, I had heard from our branch manager that there was discussion for all staff day being scheduled in September on what would be one of the holy days, uh, Rosh Hashanah, and um, to just alert. And then I, when I read my packet, I didn't see that in here, but I, you're probably aware of that anyway, Director Lair, but I just think we need to be sensitive and not use that date for all staff day. Yeah, when we put together the packet, we hadn't yet identified a day in September, and then the first day that we did identify, uh, fortunately somebody did point out that it is a religious holiday, so we'll find another day, uh, but it, it's liable to be in September. Uh, on that same point, uh, it was pointed out to me that uh, those of us without children tend to go on vacation in September because it's more convenient than the middle of the summer. And so some of the staff uh, could work around a, a September day probably, but it would be nicer to have it in October. And I, I have a question about um, the Saturday, December 23rd which is Christmas Eve observed. And my understanding is that by December, we should be on our full schedule. So all the libraries will be open on Sunday, Christmas Eve day. And so why aren't we observing Christmas Eve on Christmas Eve? You want to feel that one, Ken? Um, well, this was put together based on what we know right now, and it'll be April, uh, the Mondays and Wednesdays. We still haven't decided when and if 
we're going to open Sundays or the additional evenings, we'll be doing that throughout the budget year. <clears throat> uh, now, as far as why this is on here, I think it's been traditional that we um, uh, close on the eaves at 2 o'clock. Now, I'm not sure. I think it is because we aren't open on Sundays right now that it's laid out like this. Can we? We're going to need to amend for staff day anyway, right? Correct. And yeah. this is way over in December, so we may need to modify stuff okay. yeah, as we right. go forward, right? All right. Is this yes. Um, yes, you're not going to just stay closed just because you said it seven, eight months ago. Um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Hauser. Do the, would the staff start planning trips and things based upon this if we approved it? I know when we did our thing for April, we, you know, earlier in the year, we just did it through April, our, our approval. So I'm just wondering if maybe we should it's, it's, cut it off at November, yeah, <laughs> Thanksgiving well, and, and hold yeah, or something. I don't know if it's really about uh, staff planning trips as much as it is scheduling people uh, to get the libraries open and making sure we know when the closing dates are. And um, <clears throat> we anticipate that we'll have a schedule decided by when for all the hours. So are we giving ourselves a deadline for that? <clears throat> so. Not that I'm all right. <clears throat> What did you say? <laughs> oh, I think we, you know, I think that'll be part of the budget process is, you know, seeing what all the things that we want to fund more hoopla and all of that. And then, you know, seeing how that plays into the amount of revenue that's left to looking at opening additional hours. But right now I know staff don't have a timeline as to when to open Sundays. Okay. All right. Are we, um, Forward with this motion. We have a motion, and that is to approve this schedule. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, nobody, no, no, no opposition. So that was item 10.3. All right. So that takes us to. Uh, let's see. So we still have 10.1 and 2 under this, and then 12.2 to power through. So 10.1 is the staffing study results. Do I have a motion? I'll so move that we approve it. All right. Do I have a second? And that second. is Commissioner Hauser and Commissioner Ebright. Um, any discussion about this, Commissioner McKenzie? Yeah, I was going to ask this. Just I just had two questions about it. One, I wanted to know if there were any changes to this since we had the presentation last month, or if it's the same as we were. I believe they added the um, side note that or the side letter that was uh, part of the negotiations. Okay. And that's in the packet. Okay. And my other question was, this didn't occur to me until I was rereading my packet yesterday, but um, the criteria that was used, no, I can't find it. Where is this? Uh, you 10 want to look at page, uh, starting with page 11. Oh, yeah. So the criteria was about um, <clears throat> circulations criteria was about uh, things that were I believe, I'm going to say this wrong, like dropped off at the branch, checked in, and, yeah, check-ins. And I didn't see anything about polls. And I don't know if this is maybe an issue that's died down, but um, it seemed like the larger branches with larger collections have more work to do because they have to you know, pull more things off the shelf. And I just looking at Runner Park's uh, check-ins and Sebastopol's, um, which are, you know, kind of roughly equivalent. Anyway, I just was just wondering if, if that was part of the criteria that was reviewed, and if not, why not? 
Um, so you're asking about holds, if holds were used as part of the criteria? Yeah, I don't see any indication. It just looks like check-in. So you know, you can drop your books off anywhere, but you know, um, I don't know offhand. Keo, do you have an answer for that? Uh, do you, yeah. Keo, do you know that if the holds came into the calculations at all? We uh, focused on the check-ins. The so I know you want to talk about the holes, but the it, it's all all about workload, and all the books that moves around, they have to come back in, and so we figured that is the most accurate number that we can rely on. The checkouts have variables. We have self-check and we don't know who is using the self-check or not using the self-check. And that does not mean that all the, the patrons are using a self-check or the library staff are helping them use the self-check. So we focused on the, the check-ins. The holes will also be, uh, there is a processing of the holes, but holes will also be checked out and then they will come back in. So that's where we focused on. I don't know if I'm answering your question. So, so it would seem that they would be part of the check-in. So it would, everything, with, whatever was on hold also has to be checked in. At exactly, some point. and and then that would calculate it into the average of the workload. I know holes dealing with the holes is an enormous work in itself, but we we figure that all of the work done will result in the the check-in. Is what we focused on. I guess the part I'm missing is that if, if there was a book that belonged to the Santa Rosa collection and somebody at Runner Park wanted it, the Santa Rosa people I say, I guess they got the check-in. I don't know. I, I'm not thinking about it clearly. It just seems like this is something that really impacts the workload and that the branch that has branches that have larger collections are going to be more impacted by it. And I, you know, I, I just wondered if it was part of the discussion. So. Thank you. No, thank you. All right, Commissioner Grill. Um, yeah, my question is in particular about the relationship of library aides uh, under the current model at, at any library and then the relationship of library aides moving forward and it seemed like there's like an exponent of like uh, several hundred percent you know I'm just wondering what am I making myself clear that extrapolation going from like let's just pick Northwest libraries we got 0.625 which is let's call it one we go to library <coughs> aids under uh, uh, at the same model moving forward staying open longer we're going to 5.5 so even taking into case that we're checking in more books I don't understand that number if I could speak to that a little bit um, I just want to remind us all too that this is a study which is kind of a snapshot of what's happening now and then the union folks and management you know, had a limited amount of time as far as to, you know, try to make some recommendations around what ideal staffing should be. There's numbers in here that certainly raise eyebrows with, you know, with me. I think what may be going on with the aides um, is that right now we have some locations where we pay aides to shelve books and then we have other locations where volunteers are shelving books. So I think the rationale may have been that, that ideally, you know, we'd have an organization where we could hire people to shelve our books. And if we were to do that, uh, this may be the number of people that we'd need to carry out those duties. That is exactly right. That's exactly? I mean, okay. I mean, so were you, you, these numbers are extrapolating the fact that you have volunteers possibly in some of these cases carrying out these duties? The volunteers are helping us shelve books. 
you know, it, when I, I was just doing a thumbnail sketch looking at this, that was the biggest one that jumped out and slapped me in the face because it was like those numbers were exponential. Thank you, Keo. Any any other comments? All right. So oh. I just have one thing to say. My understanding is this is not binding in any way. Right. It's kind of what would be nice to have there. And I would go forward and say thank you to all the volunteers who've been doing the aid work, and we'd like to keep you so we can spend money on something else. <laughs> and and I'm perfectly happy saying okay, that's what we need to have there, whoever they are. Thank you. All right, thank you, and um, and thank you very much again for this extensive study. And so as to the. Uh, motion to adopt by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission adopt the staffing study results. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's another uh, unanimous. Um, so we will now move on to 10.2, uh, which is engage into agreement with the City of Santa Rosa um, to create media labs in four of our libraries, and that is, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, so we have uh, Commissioner Garcia and Commissioner Heavenridge. And we have a comment from the public on that. All right. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. Some people think because of that I'm just a one-trick pony and I only talk about Roseland and always focus on Roseland. And tonight that's true. I'm bringing it back to Roseland. I read this little agreement now and it looks pretty nice. It doesn't say which four libraries, at least in what I saw. So I'd like to ask for Roseland to be one of those. And you can start now, there's plenty of space over there. The place has got lots of space, okay? And I actually spent, oh, three years getting a degree in uh, uh, media communications, uh, television, radio, video, and uh, broadcast journalism production. And I know you can do these kinds of things in a small space with this little new equipment that you got. So you won't need a lot of space. That space right down there that Mr. they broadcast Mr. the cities. Mr. DeWitt? Yeah. I think we have an answer for you. Oh, and that'd be not wonderful. To cut in and no, it's all good. to speak after. No, just see if we can get it over. Director Lear has, a, has yeah. a response. Yeah, the four libraries that would get the labs would be the Roseland Library, the uh, Rincon Valley Library, the Central Library, and the Northwest Library. So those would be the four. Okay. Yeah, it's really rare when I get something in Roseland, man, before I even asked. <laughs> That is cool as hell. You did my ask. my language, yeah. but you know. Yeah. So we'll cool. leave it at that then. All right. Looking forward to it. Great. Thank you for joining us. Um, so uh, as to the motion to approve uh, the commission chair and the library director to sign an agreement with the city of Santa Rosa to provide future digital media labs and education in four Santa Rosa branch locations, all in favor? Uh, I have a question. Oh, I have a question before we vote. Oh. Sorry. Um, I'm wondering uh, how these are going to be personed. Uh, I'm sorry, how they're what? Manned, but personed. How these are going to be, is it going to be staff yeah. that's doing this? So this is asking staff to do something else, correct? So again, this will come into play with the, the budget preparation. Um, right now, what I'm thinking of doing as library director is to create a position, um, you know, probably called something like a digital media coordinator that would be responsible for making sure that these rooms, you know, have contractors coming in, teaching classes and that. Um, it did something similar in Florida where we created a position like that. We called them idea labs. 
and then also recruited volunteers to help with certain things. And then there would be an expectation on staff that um, that they provide a certain level of help as well. Um, but there would be a certain level of expertise that I think would only be expected of people that you brought in to teach classes and workshops. And then, uh, again, if we were to hire a digital media coordinator, you know, they would have a higher level of expertise than, say, the frontline staff that were helping people in the labs. And about how long do you think it will take to get off the ground? You know, I don't know if Eric McHenry's here from the city. Uh, do you have a, a target date, Eric? And maybe I've just spaced it as to when, you know, the money might start coming to the library. Yeah, uh, uh, Chair Whistler and uh, the commissioners, it, this is going to go to our city council on February 14th for approval, assuming uh, this commission moves it forward. At that point, the, the funds are available immediately. Okay. So, and it's, it's our interest uh, to get these happening as quick as possible to get the public access back in front of our community. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank Thanks, you sir. so much. Uh, Commissioner McKenzie? Uh, yes, this is for Commissioner Hauser, who's always interested in where we're spending our money. I just would, wanted to verify the 150, up to $150,000 that we can get from the city of Santa Rosa is for capital mm -hmm. equipment. And so we will have some costs incurred for staffing. And then it, we also have to pay for the uh, maintenance and repair of all the equipment. So there will be some maintenance agreements that we'll be responsible for. Any other comments, questions? All right, I'd like to call for the vote again. Um, all in favor of this motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you very much. Um, so then that takes us to 12.2, um, approval of additional positions needed to open Mondays from April through July of 2017. So moved. Second. Uh, who was the, who moved it? Uh, Commissioner May and uh, Commissioner Garcia. And, uh, any comments, uh, Commissioner McKenzie? Just a quick comment. I wanted to uh, remind everyone that the finance committee did spend a lot of time on this and unanimously. Uh, recommends approval. Um, I'm sorry, I got lost in my packet here. All right. Uh, so, on the motion that the Sonoma County Library mm -hmm. Commission approve the additional positions identified by staff to open on Mondays from April through June of 2017. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Carried unanimously. All right. So then that takes us to item 13, uh, action items by resolution. And we have two to um, review and approve here. The first one is 13.1, approve resolution on unrepresented Employees, salary and benefits for fiscal year 2016-2017. Um, do I have? So move. That's Heaven. Second. I have Commissioner Heavenridge and Commissioner Hauser. Um, any discussion? Any comments? Questions? All right. Um, so. Um, we are voting to move by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission modify fiscal year 2016-2017 salary and benefits for the library's management and confidential employees to reflect the tentative agreement with SEIU approved October 3rd, 2016. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. It's carried, and I, I know I have something to sign for that. Um, and then that takes us to item 
10.4, approve resolution in support of the work of the Roseland Coalition. Second. Second. <laughs> it's a race to the finish here. I'm sorry, um, I was first. All right. Uh, any, what? Who made the motion? Uh, Commissioner Garcia, and who seconded? Commissioner Heavenridge. Okay, so this is a, a motion that the Sonoma County Library Commission approve the resolution in support of the work of the Rosa Coalition and its partnership with the Sonoma County Library to improve educational, economic, and health outcomes for the Roseland community through fundraising efforts for a future permanent Roseland library. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Uh, against? None. All right. So that is... Okay. We are moving on from action, from action item under 13 to action item, or not action item, but lab appointments under 14, and I believe there is just one lab appointment, and that is Ralph Johnson to a position on the Sebastopol Library Advisory Board for a term ending on June 30th, 2021. Um, do I have a, a Commissioner Garcia makes a motion? Second. And I, I will second. Oh, you'll say. Go ahead. You can, can I have it. Yes, yeah. you can okay. have it since it's Sebastian. I can second. No, it's okay. <laughs> so I'll second it. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? None? All right. Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, is it, does it seem reasonable? I'm confused about consent calendars. Um, and what I'm wondering is, does it make a sense to put board an, board approvals on the consent calendar? Well, I asked an expert before our meeting, and, um, and that was Ken, is Ken, who tells me he had checked with county council and that it is, it is okay to do that. Yeah, resolutions can be on the consent calendar as well as most Your microphone's not on. Good answer. There we go. Uh, resolutions as well as motions can be put on the consent calendar. Uh, we check that over with the, our legal counsel. So, I was just wondering about in the future if lab appointments could just be on the consent oh, calendar. There you go. It could. It could. And I think I, let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And now as to items to include in commission notes. Information on the resolution to support the work of Rosen Coalition. Okay. Well, today we approved opening more hours and providing staff. I think that's useful. <laughs> okay. Are you typing quickly? <laughs> we have a retreat date, March 25th. Okay. The agreement with Santa Rosa City Council, City, for the media labs. Uh huh. The uh, video with Santa Rosa. The new HR manager starting tomorrow. New HR manager starting tomorrow. Okay. I'd like to put on uh, Ms. Deborah Doyle's comments about. Um, uh, I can't remember the bill number, but Senator Dodd's bill about 55% um, for library bonds. SEA 3? Yeah, SEA 3, which... For capital expenditures. Okay. And I would like to add, if it's for sure, about the expansion of... Um, materials management into Warner Park. When will that be decided? I don't know if it's... Ken, when, when will the decision be made about when uh, the move of the, to like either Runner Park or whatever? <coughs> um, about 10 days ago, the broker asked the owner at Roner Park for a proposal for a five or ten year lease and we haven't received that yet so um, it 
It may be ready for the March uh, meeting, but uh, probably more like April. Yeah. Okay. I would also like to just give another shout out for the do-it-yourself toolkit and the success of that. A program. shout out for what I couldn't hear. For the success of the do-it-yourself toolkit program. Yes, the do-it-yourself toolkit program. The success of it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, what about um, agenda items for future commission meetings? And just so you know, um, I, I think the question came up as to getting items on the agenda. So if you have thoughts on adding items to the agenda, um, you, can, you can send them to me for consideration. You could talk to Brett. Um, I think that you have a couple of avenues. But um, What's the closing date for the next agenda? What is the closing date for the next agenda? The next agenda, oh, our next meeting. Our next meeting will be March 6th. March 6th. Um, so let's see. Really? March 6th. March 6th. I'd like to see a status report on the new hiring and whether we're really going to make April 3rd openings. I'm sorry, say that. So a status report on the... On the new employee hirings and what's the likelihood of hitting April 3rd openings. So likelihood of having them trained and ready to ready rumble by April 1st? April 3rd. I have a request, uh, if it's at all possible, for item number 16, where it says uh, agenda items for future commission meetings, if we had the closing date on, on that agenda item on the agenda. Had the closing date. In other words, the agenda needs to be decided oh, I got it. by okay. a Sorry. certain date. <laughs> so if when we see item 16 and it says agenda items for future commission, agenda you know, it's locked as of so and so. It would seem like the close, the cutoff date would be about the twentieth of of February. Okay. So the twentieth of February would be the closing date for this next agenda, and so you'd like that added onto the agenda as to no. so I mean, under I'm, so just so we under item sixteen on the agenda, which calls for future commission meetings. Items right. you right. would want that to be include the date for the next Month. cutoff. Yeah, if that's possible. If it's too much, uh -huh. not necessarily. But. May I make a suggestion? The city council of Rona Park we're basing our protocols around there. They have a policy that takes two council members to put something on the agenda. But if two council members agree, then it goes on the agenda. Ours seems like a, it's a little softer, like we might consider it. But So anyway, I'd like to have a stronger protocol on how you get things on the agenda. I would also like to have a um, schedule for agenda preparation. I saw it once, but then I don't know what happened. There was like cutoff dates. I know I've seen a schedule. And lastly, I'd like to have a schedule of commission meetings, which I don't think, I don't have, but maybe we have. It came up when we were talking about the July 4th closure. Um, July 3rd would be when we would have our meeting, and I don't know if we're having one or not. I, don't, I can't find a schedule anywhere, and I looked on the website. I think we had a list of commission meetings that we approved last, last year, yeah. So you'll resend it to us. Okay. You thank will. You okay. So thank you. It's not on the website, by the way. Nor are our pictures. Our commissioner pictures are not on the website either. Thank God. All right. So, um, anything else before we adjourn by acclamation? <laughs> okay. Oh, it is uh, earlier than last time. It is eight forty-four. How's that?
No, it's 8.40. It's not according to that clock up there that we opened by. Thank you.